Hello there, this is Alex, also known as Default Sound, and welcome to another video. Today is a slightly different video, and I wanted to show you something I've been working on. And uh, this is actually an entry to Algorithmic's Procedural Material Contest. And I've decided to enter the sci-fi category, and I've made this fairly complicated procedural texture. And today I'm going to give you a quick overview of what you're able to use it for and how it can be used and just go over how I've made it as well. So this is the final output on the left here. So this texture is actually two textures in one as in the description explains here. So what I've got is a set of trims that you're able to use and in the parameters of this uh, material, we have the option to switch to a tile. So if you were to bring this into a engine, you could essentially have one substance factory to produce two materials that could essentially create a modular sci-fi environment. So you've just got a quick switch here to switch between the two. So. How did I create this? Well, it's um, fairly messy, <laughs> but uh, this is the basic idea. So originally I decided I wanted to create the sci-fi category. I decided to make some trims. and I kind of looked at some reference and got some ideas. And so this is the first one at the top here. So it goes from 1 to 5 and down to the bottom. And here we've got uh, all the circles that make up this pattern here. And then this is the mask for those circles here. I then make this teeth pattern using shapes. So everything here is essentially built from shapes and then transformed and subtracted and etc. to eventually create the pattern that you have. And then I do some other stuff and there we go there's our first trim at the top here and then I go ahead and these this one's probably the most complicated one the first one and then the other four are not too bad and so again I just used shapes and manipulated those shapes to create all the various uh, trims that you have here now each um, trim is fully customizable. You can change the paint color. You can change, for example, on the fourth trim, you can change all the colors of the pipes um, or the the wires if you want them to be wires. And this is done by breaking the masks apart. And so I then use the the basically the the some each component of the overall mask to then control each uh, trim value here that's quite convoluted but it allows you to change the metallic the roughness and base color um, for each component and you have full control over what colors things are and um, what values you want the roughness and metallic to be so it's quite you can adjust this whole overall look of each trim while the shape stays the same, you can change the color, the roughness, and everything. So we also have a um, custom mask set up here for some damage and some dirt. And again, these control specific values that are able to change. Um, so that's something I did. If you just want to quickly add some dirt or some damage, or you can have it completely clean if you want. Completely optional. So then over here we have the switch that changes to our tile here to fill the larger areas between our trims. And so the tile looks something like this. Again, just using shapes to build the uh, the tile and then combining those masks to something like this. And then we tile that and that controls again all the values that we're able to change not as much control over the tile over, um, than the trims do but I still give you options to change like paint values and how much paint where and dirt that you want on the tiles 
and that's basically how I approached this. I just built black and white masks and then used those to control uh, the various parameters that I have then made accessible in the uh, parameters list. And then here is the blend node that switches between either the trim or the tile and that's for each output. So again you're getting two materials or two textures in one substance graph. So it got a little bit confusing but um, using frames to keep it organized mostly kept it uh, easy to read. It seems, it seems a little bit confusing here but um, you can s sort of trace the the nodes back to see whatever well, whatever this value's controlling. So anyway, I will now show you. So once you publish this, um, for the sake of example, I've got it here in Marmoset, and here are all the various parameters you can change. Uh, so it has five outputs. You have norm height for the displacement. You have normal roughness or gloss, uh, base color or albedo, and a metallic. So this is um, for the metal rough approach. On top of that we have um, obviously you can tessellate so this is all tessellated at the moment. Um, we can increase the resolution a little bit. Probably this needs to be um, subdivided a bit more before uh, we apply the tessellation but um, so it just shows you that the height works here. You see the offset on the tessellation there. Like so. And this is an example of how you can use the trims to sort of build an environment. And uh, we can also change some parameters here. So let's say on our trims, let's make the base paint red, for example. Uh, maybe we'll make this quite rough. Um, let's let's look at our tiles now. So again, you can just hit this boolean value here and it will switch between the two. So we can have again one substance graph that then powers various materials. So if we go down here to our, our tile um, paint color we can change this like so, make it orange. Let's add some more wear. Uh, maybe the paint position slightly less, Let's make it quite rough, Let's add lots of dirt, make the dirt slightly darker, that's looking pretty good, Let's make it quite rough as well, and yeah so you can kind of go mad, you can change all sorts of parameters, so um, top pipe will make this yellow. Um, Let's add a bit more dirt to our trims here. Oh, it's processing. Let's make this darker. So yeah, you get the idea. So you can sort of build uh, modular panels like this and then apply two material IDs to it. So you can then apply the, the tiling texture or the trims to it. I also have an example of a scene that I made. take a while to load because it's quite uh, dense with geometry because it's all tessellated but um, it just goes to show you how you can use this one graph to create a whole environment if you so wanted to and here we go so again I can create duplicates of this one graph and apply it to various material IDs to create something like this so we've got again this tiling texture but this one's orange this one's white and then we've got you know one set of trim one set of trim material here and then maybe a different one on the ceiling so it gives you a lot of options to create an environment something like this so i hope that's given you insight in how to use the material um, all the parameters are fairly self-explanatory if you look in the substance graph here you can see that I've grouped them into um, you know, their respective trim or tile 
Uh, unfortunately, Mama Set doesn't have the grouping yet, but um, for say Unreal or Unity, you should have these groups um, available to you. And then again, you can change all the parameters and uh, yeah, create the or make the tile or the trims suit the environment you want to make. So I hope you like this material, procedural material, and I uh, hope it's useful to you. And this gives you some insight on how you might want to edit it. Obviously I've kept frames here so you can see where the masks are being made and then change where those are getting, getting input, inputted into. Um, so maybe you just want to steal this design. You can copy that and use it wherever you want. So uh, thanks for watching.